going to be talking about the current cost to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more honest contents. We're beginning it. We, we've already done a formal breakdown of the NAWCQ, but we haven't actually had the chance to look at the current price of the meta. Because, you know, every every day I'm reading posts going, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh is too expensive, I'm quitting. I, I do want to, no matter what I'm going to say in this video, um, not everybody's going to like what I have to say. Um, you do not have to play Snake Eyes right now. Uh, I assure you of that. It is not a deck that you have to be playing. All right, the rogue half of the chart here does in fact exist. And especially on a local level, you definitely don't have to be playing this. I've got so many rogue deck profiles right now for things that you can play to do well with. Um, it's just that. Now, let's get into you know your meat and bones here. Your deck price for the best deck in the room, the Snake Eyes pile here. You already know what is going to be costing you crazy amounts of money in this. All right, just looking at this, you already know, yeah, your Dia Bell Stars are a chunk. The most expensive sub package is going to be dedicated to, you know, the engravers. You know, that that's fine. And then, of course, you're looking at what, like 30, 35 on bonfires. Uh, wanteds are now 20s. Those have formally gone down. But the thing down here in the extra deck that's the mild inconvenience is. The SP is still floating about, we're going to say 100. Moltarmi is a new card, but they've recently gone up to 60, which has kind of inflated things a little bit. But those are those are your expensive high-end things you're looking at. And as you can very easily tell here, you know, between these two decks, that's a little bit rough. Now, when you get into Ubel down here, it's it's pretty much the same story here. You know, what what's really dragging down Ubel's price? Well, it's the Fiendsmith package, yet again. I mean, this once again, bare minimum, $300. There's no changing this. All right, Phantoms alone for the extra deck down here are also going to be expensive. And the Nightmare Thrones. Like, if you did manage to pick up the Ubel stuff, I would say in terms of current meta price for Ubel, if you were to wipe out the Fiend Smith package, I'd probably be shaving off probably $350. The base U Bell stuff in this deck, probably once again, I mean, every deck that is competitively viable right now is playing the $100 card, to say the least. Once again, we're rounding up a little bit. Um, you know, SPs might be like 90 to, you know, like 105, but in terms of consideration for your number aspect of things, uh, there's that. So. Yeah, I can understand why this, it's funny because this is literally pulling the exact same price literally right around Snake Eyes. Like, these two decks are vying for that viability. Now let's get down here. What What about Tenpai Dragons? You know, what's what's making Tenpai so expensive? Well, here's here's the interesting thing about Tenpai. This build's not even playing SP Little Knight, all right? I mean, you still got, what, like 15 bucks a piece invested into these. You're getting Rokus or 8s, Pond of Prosperity for 5 6 bucks. I mean, it's all these little cards that you've got. And then, you know, the biggest thing that's the, the chum changer here that's going to be hurting you is still going to be the Trident Dragon. all right? But, okay, so... We've cut down the meta viability from that near thousand dollar price point here. We, we've cut it all the way down here to the two hundred and fifty three dollar mark. Like that's fine. And guess what? There's something here available for under two hundred, which is also crazy. Well, Robbie, I'm not going to play Runic. Well, that, that's fine. You don't have to play Runic. I don't want to. The thing I find always funny about this when you're looking at the meta is, you know, if you take SP out of this deck and then you take out. The, the Typhoon, um, you know, okay, so you're at 185, all right? You're down to $85 without this. If you take out the Typhoon, you're a $55 deck, all right? That can do well. And it amazes me that people complain about this. It's just, the, the meta viability, it's it's fine. Yeah, you're playing stun. Oh, I don't wanna bring myself to that. But you have a deck available for $55 once you take out the two expensive cards. What am I missing here about this? Like, this looks, dare I say, affordable without these two cards? And I assure you, this cutting cutting the SP, it only comes up every once in a while. If you cut the Typhoon, you might have some issues, but still, 50 bucks. Okay, well that's that's kind of weird. What about branded right now? Branded coming in a little bit more of a price point. Here's the thing about branded. Um, 
your last remaining expensive cards are what? Like Quem. Um, she's going to get pushed down here. Uh, and then Thrust is still one of the most expensive things remaining out here. So once Quem reprint comes, you'll shave off 40 bucks for this, put you down to near 300. Uh, I feel like these alone are like 40 bucks a piece. So that, that's where a lot of your extra value is kind of coming in. And also, I mean, can't forget the Black Oat Laughs also is coming in at a decently high price point as well right now. So Brandon's price point will fall as the future, you know, list go. That's another big thing to think about here in terms of how things are going in the course of the meta right now is these prices are not absolute for the time being. All right, like, think about that. Uh, you see more Snake Eyes, more Tempai for 300 uh, and then, wow, more of the 1,000, 1,000 effectively. Uh, R Johnny's list with Runic here was coming in at $195, and your real major difference in price is going to be the scrub grade, honestly. But that that's about it. Like, that's, that's crazy. All right, you get down here. I really wish we had the Ritual Beast deck price right now, just to see. But what about Labyrinth? The, this Labyrinth deck price, hold on, you know what? Let me back that up for you for a second. $111 to play Lab. Okay, well, is there anything in here we can, I don't know. I, I think most everything that you need to be playing in this, you do need to know how this card works to, to get some maximum value. But, and then you have the mini runic package. If you really want to cut the runic cards, you can. All right, but here's a here's a hundred dollar tier one meta deck that, you know, if you want to play control, congratulations, you can do so. I, I personally think that that's a okay. What about the, uh, our vanquished soul pile that you saw with all this? A little bit, I would say, higher of a skill curve here for sure. Uh, you know, you do have a lot of the Fire King Snake Eye stuff present in this build. But for all intents and purposes, hey, look, there's $100. Uh, this build, for being a roguish outlander, was, you know, $604. What about this? Oh, tier. Okay. You know, somebody came through with tier. This is $150 right now. All right. Just to be able to play tier. And, you know, if you had a lot of this stuff from back in the day, you're, you're good to go. I mean, a lot of your stuff is going to cost you randomly will be the random extra deck cards that you're playing along the way. Like, okay, that that's fine in my opinion. I don't mind seeing 150. Personally, I don't think that's fine. Hey, look, another runic variant down here at $192. Okay. Now, the gimmick puppet thing here, I feel like this is a little bit more expensive. This is the $300 mark. But you know what's costing you the most money in the gimmick puppet stuff, right? It's the Horus package, all right? And Seti's alone are, what, 45 to to uh, $60 range? So this is this is $180, you know, $80, $150 of your value right here in the deck. So that, that's a big thing to consider out here for the Rogue Piles. And also, you know, the Thrust. This These... The expensive cards that have been expensive, you could play without the Horus package. I don't recommend it, though, uh, but you would shave down a lot of former value for that. And you come on down here to this gimmick puppet list, this is $196. But once again, you know, you cut those thrust out, you know, you're down because of the Horus package. It's the same thing. The rest of this deck is nothing, all right? But that consistency that that Horus package is giving you for that hundred and, you know, 50 bucks effectively is really, really, really pushing this price point here. So that's, a, that's like I said, you're definitely looking at that. Now, this is a little bit more disheartening. Memento with a, how big of a price point was that? $802. And I mean, okay, you know why this is expensive, right? Because you're playing the Fiendsmith package in here for that consistency. All right. And that's the only real major thing that you're doing with this to push the gap for you to do the thing. And then last but not least down here, we have a Ritual Beast deck at 372 the biggest things in this are going to be the Elders, which have been pushing 15s. Uh, the new Laras are a little bit all over the place in terms of value. All right, Protoss is still 35 to 40 bucks. All right, so those are your major contenders in here for that. And then, of course, you have a random Mall Charmy down here as a cross-out target as well. Okay, so the current cost of your meta, while it is a little bit disheartening, 
it's you've got alternatives. The gimmick puppet stuff is temporarily cheap. I don't expect it to live through the next list. Same thing with, you know, <laughs> Runic. But with that being said, I'm not expecting the current iterations of these price points either to be the top end of the meta at all, especially post tens and post, you know, SP's reprint out here. You know, shaving, you know, probably $60 off of each deck just in an SP price tag is going to make these decks look a lot different in terms of numbers. So that that's the reality of the situation. Yu-Gi-Oh! does look expensive, or actually is expensive, but every Fiendsmith package that you're seeing in here, guess what, is $300 on top of the deck price. But don't be, you know, fooled because there are alternatives available in here in this meta, you know, that you can easily play and go into next format and easily play as well. So those are my thoughts. Please leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think. And just because, you know, your deck isn't competitively viable, that that's there will always be better decks. That's the reality of the situation. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.